Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we would do something a little different. Just so you know, I do read the comments and really appreciate all your feedback. I did have someone reach out to me and ask if I could talk to you a little bit about drapery treatments, how to make them look more luxe, how do we decide which drapery treatment to use in which project. And I do want to talk a little bit about, I know you guys have seen what I do and that we do luxury design and that's true but I didn't always have the big budgets that I work with now and not everyone has big budgets that we work with we really do try to work within our clients budgets it's my job to know where to save and where to splurge and with drapery treatments you know my philosophy put the money into the items that can't be changed and then spend the money when you can to do it right. So we're gonna go through blinds, we're gonna go through drapery treatments, we're gonna go through fabrics, we're gonna go through patterns, and I'm gonna kinda of give you a little synopsis of how I make the decisions for my projects. So stick with us and we're going to have a little bit of fun today. So the best drapery treatments are done in layers. And again, this is where we take the budget and we start with the first layer and then we can always add to them. So first layer would be our blinds. There are different type of blinds. There are roller blinds, there are silhouette blinds, cellular blinds, as well as shutters. Here at MMI, we rarely, if ever, have done shutters. I find them really heavy in a room, and the beauty of a room is its windows. You want to be able to take advantage of nature's artwork outside and the light coming in. Shutters, while giving you privacy, also block off all view and all lights. So we rarely ever do them. We usually work with the roller blinds and silhouettes. So with a cellular blind, it's an inexpensive option. It's kind of between a roller blind and a silhouette in terms of price. Why I don't like using them is that there is no light filtering option. They usually, they're up or they're down. So you either have a view or you don't. You either have light or you don't. Roller Roller blinds are an inexpensive option and they give you different light filtering options. So you can go with a sheer and you can go with something that is room darkening. So that's a really important question to ask yourself, especially for a bedroom. Do you need complete privacy and do you need room darkening? With a roller blind, there are options. They are the most budget friendly. So what I like to do is if we have a little bit of a budget, I would do the roller blinds at the back of the house in a children's room or in a um, main bathroom. And then I would do silhouettes at the front of the house. So you wanna think about your windows at the front and at the back as being all consistent. So your front should all be one type of blind, at the back should all be one type of blind, but they don't necessarily have to both be the same type of blind because they're different views. So if you go with the silhouettes at the front, the beauty of silhouettes is that they offer light filtering, they offer light blockage if you need a blackout, not quite the same as a roller blinds blackout, but pretty close. And then they give you the option of still having the view while giving you a little bit of privacy. If you roll them up one way, if you roll them up the other, you can still have light while having privacy. So they are my favorite blind and it's usually how we start building our lair. So again, if budget um, isn't there, we start with the silhouettes and then we can always come back down the road to add our drapery which now will take us to our drapery treatments. So even though a Roman blind is a drapery treatment, I'm purposely pulling it out of the blind section and giving it its own because basically it is a fabric and there are different type of Roman blinds you can do. So there's a straight across Roman blind and then there's what we call a soft Roman, which is really one of my favorites. So there's also a faux Roman blind versus a um, full Roman blind. The difference being if that Roman blind is just for looks, it's being used more of a balance, then we don't need the same amount of fabric that we would for a full blind. 
again, another trick. So I'm gonna show you where, how we do ours, where we save money and still get the look that I want. So the beauty with Roman blinds is, again, if you're going with a full application, it's gonna give you complete privacy, but it is gonna block out the view and the light. So for room darkening, they're great. Again, we usually use it as a layer. So again, if I had to build up my layers, we'd have our roller blind or a silhouette, then we would have a soft Roman, and then we would do our drapery panels on top of that. So the soft Roman has a little dip, as you see here, and the straight Roman, which we use usually in a more masculine space or in a more modern space, is done straight across. The next treatment would be our valances. So again, we now have a hard valance and a soft valance. And this is really the look that I want to achieve. Again, hard valances I would typically use more in masculine rooms, whereas soft valances I would definitely do in a feminine room. Actually allow me to do as many different shapes as I want. Again, it's a layer, so we don't do it often. It's really more for formal rooms. Again, budget and the style that I'm trying to achieve really dictates whether or not I use those. So now that we've selected that we're going to use a fabric Roman blind, we need to decide where to place it. There are three placements for Roman blinds, inside the window, outside the window, and on the casing. We only do this if there's a really beautiful casing being used, large and with a back bend. And it also depends if there are other treatments being used. The next treatment I wanna talk about is side panels versus full panels, which is basically what it sounds like. Full panels is when you want the drapery to close completely. Side panels is when they're best just being used for show. When we do our panels, we usually work on a two and a half times width, which means you take the width of the window and you multiply that number by two and a half to get your fullness. Next, we decide on the top of the treatment. So many to choose from. The most common being tab top and grommet. These are what you see at most ready-made stores and at MMI, we never actually use these. Couple of reasons for that. First off is exactly what I said. This is what most ready-made drapery panels look like. But also when they are closed, they wind up giving you a um, flat sheet on the window look because there is no fullness to those two treatments. And if you're opening and closing your windows quite a bit, they're going to be very difficult to move back and forth. Our favorite M at MMI is the Euro pinch pleat. So it's a take on the traditional French pleat that you used to see in your mother and your grandmother's um, living room and dining rooms. It's a formal treatment, but more casual and more contemporary. Uh, we love it for the look it gives, plus the fullness of the drapery. One of our favorites for a modern or contemporary space is the ripple fold. Now this is actually one of the most expensive expensive treatments to do because of the hardware. There is no um, pinching or pleating of the fabric top. It is just as it said, it's ripple fold. The uh, fabric just goes back and forth and it's a really clean, really beautiful look. An inverted box pleat is another very popular one. It is sometimes called flat panel and when it's closed, it gives a beautiful ripple fold look, but it's less expensive to do. Then we we have the length of our curtains. There are four lengths you can choose from. Hover, breaking, sweeping, and puddling. We use breaking almost exclusively at MMI. So hovering was when it's just about a half inch or an inch off the floor. Breaking, if you think of a pant leg, the way it breaks at the front, just that little crisp break, that's my favorite. And then sweeping is sort of in the middle of breaking and puddling. Puddling was really uh, really popular at one time. I never really got into it because I just find it's too much fabric on the floor. Sweeping for the people who like puddling but want a cleaner look, that's when you would go for that. And then the last consideration when doing draperies is what lining to use. Three to choose from again. There is a standard lining, then there's a blackout, which if you want your room to be completely black, that's the one you would use. I also use blackout when we're doing patterned fabrics. This allows, um, it blocks the sunlight 
light from distorting the fabric or changing the color of the fabric. So again, if budget permits, I will always choose a black outlining so that the color and pattern stay true and consistent. And then interlining is something that is placed between the fabric and the lining. It's a third layer. It's um, also called a thermal lining because it does give the room thermal qualities. It helps block out drafts that are coming in through your windows. And if you're using a very thin silk, um, it gives it more of a voluminous look to it. And then the last question that I want to address is whether or not to use patterns and whether we use patterns. So one of the things to keep in mind with patterns, small, medium, large. The larger the pattern, more fabric you need so that when you're doing two panels of fabric together and you're matching those patterns, the larger pattern will have a larger vertical repeat, which means there's a lot of waste to get the patterns to line up. So keep that in mind when making a decision whether you're going to custom make a large patterned drape. And then I guess for me, the decision whether to use a pattern or not, again, goes back to what's the feel of the room? What are the other fabrics that I'm choosing? How does that play on patterns work? And what's the customer's preference always? So we're back here at one of my projects and while talking about patterns, we can't forget color blocking. I'm in one of the guest bedrooms. We did a series of three uh, gender specific luxury bedrooms. We'll leave the link here for you to show you my version of color blocking in this particular room. So what we did here is the colors are actually the same. I changed fabrics. We start with a linen and at the bottom we've done a banding of wool. And then you can see where I took this satin trim and divided the two. Now the inspiration for this drapery treatment came from this chair. It was an antique chair that we repainted um, and recovered. And you can see I've got the linen and wool here as well. So when looking for inspiration for your drapery treatments, take a look at your uh, furniture and the other items that are going to be in the room. So I hope you've learned a few things. If you have any more questions, please reach out. Let me know in the comments below your favorites and what you would like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.